have sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, is Ripper here? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Got another video with the Druid. This time, full gunboat build, focused primarily on the guns of the Druid. Really, just getting that fastest reload you can possibly get, all, all while sacrificing concealment. But we're not really worried about that because it's in clan battles, and we're gonna get spotted from the moon. We don't care. We want to take an engagement head on. Before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. And uh, if you think that we're doing a good job, uh, let us know in the comments below what we can do to get better as well. And as always, thank you for saying hi out there to the community. We're trying to build a better one. And at 2,000 subs, we're going to do a free premium DD giveaway. So let's get to it. Here is the video. So basic strategy on this one. So I called for a 2 DD push. So 2 DDs are going to press alpha objective. We know we're going to engage a uh, potential d destroyer here. We know that the destroyer at Charlie is probably going to go to alpha. So we're going to take that. We're going to roll the dice and take an engagement with a Kleber and a Druid. Most likely you're going to win that battle. I think to the two, one of the I was a top two gunboats in the game. Definitely will eliminate whatever threat that we see coming at Alpha. So we got that issue going on. But right, the, the biggest bulk of the force is going to, we called for, is going to go a heavy push right down the 789 line uh, to this with a destroyer supporting as well. And I like this whole 3-3-1 three, three, uh, setup. Three destroyers, three cruisers, one battleship. I think it's a great strategy, great loadout because it gives you options. It gives you a lot of that... Uh, not only spotting, but speed, decapping, as well as torping and gunboat action because I am a DD main. I definitely like the DD roll. And uh, you definitely can see that a destroyer versus a cruiser actually can make a difference. So let's take a look at some of the, and actually move these, because um, I'm, I'm definitely going to see, I know that they're going to go to alpha and cap and try to do it. Most of the times I've seen people do that where they'll take a cruiser, uh, you know, go to the west behind this island. We'll have a, a destroyer that way and so forth. So let's take the arrows out and see actually what we're going to do. I'm in yellow in the druid. So we're going to proceed down south with our Kleber. So we're going to take this engagement head on. Whatever comes approaches us at alpha, we are going to literally two versus one and eliminate one destroyer right there, eliminating uh, their uh, spotting at alpha. And of course, we have our destroyer on the eastern side uh, flanking as well as spotting for our team. We're going to have the uh, team spread out going down the 789 line with the battleship in tow. That way you get five on whatever is over here, giving a kind of a numbers advantage. Now, what is the enemy team probably going to do again? We're going to eliminate this destroyer over here. They'll probably send one cruiser maybe behind an island to do radar support. And I'm assuming if they are doing what most people do, I've seen a destroyer go out eat or vary the, on the flank on the eastern side to, to kind of give uh, support there and they'll probably push uh, the battleship center kind of this spread out pattern right here now the reason why this works out very well for us is because i like the aspect of overwhelming firepower because if you have literally five guns aiming at one spot you can literally eliminate one ship and pick them off slowly at a time it's hard for teams to react to that and by the time they do react maybe like let's say we eliminate this cruiser right here their buddy is the cruiser's too far in the back or too far out of the picture in order to support by the time they approach he's next in line and get shot at as well so that's why i like this strategy so much and the other aspect is we want to eliminate this destroyer here. Once we let's say we, let's say we take out uh, this enemy destroyer. Uh, let me delete it. Okay, let's assuming we, we eliminate the destroyer. Then the Kleber and I will actually go ahead and proceed and uh, do a point maneuver. Uh, I'm going to run point and spot the rest of the team. Again, they're ex totally exposed over here on the e western side of Charlie. Kleber is either going to proceed down to Charlie and cap it or go through the middle and try to do a torp run. Now, but this gives us two options, two flanking maneuvers by destroyers. Now. Depending upon where this the cruiser will be at, I'll either go ahead and retreat or fall back with my Kleber and have an exit strategy. Always have an exit strategy to uh, to leave the area in case there is a problem. Now, my goal is to continuously harass this western flank. I'll go even if I have to go far wide out because the range of the guns of the uh, this Druid is so long range, good and accurate and very, uh, I would say, a high rate of fire. You can do something like this and proceed with the, the, um, the Druid. We're going to proceed to the western side here and then start sniping and start flanking them at Charlie by distracting them because I'm assuming since they're all engaging my main bulk of the force, these cruisers will probably f have fallen back into these positions and that way we can eliminate them uh, one by one and slowly just flank them and kind of pincer move kind of a style right there. But let's see how it actually works out and uh, it's pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the video. All right, team, we're here on the map Sleeping Giant in the Druid here, and this is a full DD gunboat build, sacrificing concealment. As you can see, my concealment ring is out to 7.3. I'm not too worried. The Clavera is probably ranging out to about 7.5 to 8 or something like that, so he's going to get spotted first anyways, but he's running point for me. So this time we have the Clavera running point with Druid in tow, 
full gunboat build, so whatever approaches our way is going to get a full face of armor-piercing shells from the two main batteries of the uh, Druid. Now, if you don't know what the Druid is, the Druid is a premium uh, available in the Research Bureau, I believe, and it's definitely worth it, along with the Vampire, uh, as well as the Ohio. Um, I think the Ohio is for steel. I'm not sure. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. I just know there's another Research Bureau ship that's... Yeah, I think it's Ohio. But those are the top three ships that I've gotten in the Research Bureau, and I just cannot say, I don't regret it. Really awesome ships. They're really powerful in clan battles. And Druid, why it excels so much is because it just focuses on one thing. And I've always said, stop being you know, a, tra uh, a jack of all trades, master at none. Well, be a master of something. So you really, really focus on your honer skills on something that that is super, super good, which is gunboat. I mean, I like being a DD main because it's fast firing guns. You're a key component in the game. You're always able to flex. You're able to quick reaction. You're a, a very, very powerful guns, very, very, very powerful torpedoes. And that gives you the options to really do a lot of damage. And especially with the Druid, it focuses on aiming and guns. So that's why I like it so much. It's got good, decent uh, acceleration power. Not the fastest. Of course, you can see Colbert way out ahead of us. He's going to go ahead and alert, light up the whole area and get spotted so that we can start engaging. As you can see, it has the quick smokes, which I do like, because that gets kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card. If you're ever in a situation, pop the smoke, run out of way, and get out of there. But the other thing you can also do with the Drew is like a Petro style, where you're nose in the whole time, just shooting your main battery guns, which is pretty fun. It does have heals. You can build more for a survivability build if you like. The heals do come in handy. But again, um, I would not tank in this thing that much, because if you lose the two front guns, you're dead. You know, So 28,800 health is the maximum I can get this thing to. Um, and I've noticed in some engagements where I'm like the Petro, you do lose those front two turrets a lot um it's just the way the game mechanics works and you only have two it's not really worth it now here we go here's our first engagement here gearing opens up for some darn reason not really sure that the clay bear is there by himself but he is so he decides to open up we then go ahead and open up and look how much damage we're going to pummel on this gearing not really a fair fight here two versus one he popped a smoke but that's too little avail it is not enough to save him because we are just doing way too much damage he is down to his last breath right here and if we can just get land these shells i'm lo notice i'm leading where he's gonna be not where he's at and boom splash one he goes down that's our first kill for the day. 14,000 damage. We did that gearing right off the bat. Uh, if gearing only you know, has starting about 22,000-ish, I mean, doing 14,000, that is a lot, a lot of heavy damage right there. We nose in with our Hydra up, make sure the gearing did not launch torpedoes at us, and now we are in our flanking position. So we're going to look at our mini-map. A good destroyer player, especially the one that is the point man, the leader, will know what the situation is going or is, is doing by looking at the mini-map and figuring out where are the players and where are your friendlies at to position people in the appropriate uh, area to do the maximum amount of damage while mitigating your losses. So we're noticing that the whoever's leading in front should be the one to be getting killed, so we call for either a shot on the Petro or the Napoli, whichever uh, is available for someone's firing. Now, we're look at the range of these guns. The range we're getting out is 14 and a half, which is more than enough for us to be in a safe, long-range standoff distance, and we're going to go ahead and pummel this Marseille and you notice it's not much damage, a thousand, but imagine a thousand every couple seconds. It, it does add up over time, especially for a ship that only has about 58 to 60,000 HP. You're talking about if I did this for a minute, he would melt, okay? And if he did, it did all his heals and everything, it still is melting. Now we're losing, uh, we lost our Des Moines, but we did take out the Destroyer, which is, I'm sorry, not Destroyer, but they're two cruisers that we had called out for, their Petro and their Napoli, which is exactly what we wanted. Now the enemy team is in a predicament here. They have to make a decision. Do we work together and push forward, or we run away and try to go to the west? Going to the west is a bad move because I'm over here. So I'm in a druid, and I'm literally just going to pick them off one by one. And it's very annoying having a druid. Have you ever played against a druid? You know how annoying this can be? Having literally double barrel 127 mm armor-piercing shells coming at you from long range, and they're taking away about 500 to 1,000 uh, HP every single couple seconds and it's not good they lose their uh destroy but we lose our gk which is not good we're gonna have to play a little bit more smarter here if we lose the bulk of our force so again we're also drawing fire from the minotaur we took stress off the our team from the minotaur he was doing a lot a lot of damage so now that our team can push up with no uh threat from the minotaur and just look at a light cruiser what an, a um a look at 2900 damage off the, the uh, minotaur with these guns this is my older brother right here the older brother minotaur is the older brother to the druid and we are literally just exchanging AP shells, uh, going back and forth. And notice he is taking a lot of damage, which he elects to actually kite away, which is kind of funny. We're kiting away from a destroyer. You think a cruiser would rush a destroyer, but unfortunately not. 
And we're gonna also gonna pop smoke and get out of dodge free card because we are not within his radar range. That's why I like these long range gunboat builds because they keep you out of the, the uh, threat of radar. So we're gonna continuously try to nick as much uh, HP off of the Marseille right here and just notice the amount of HP we're taking off. He's just melting right now. And it's exactly what we wanna do. He has no other choice but then to begin angling towards us and uh, either he angles to our team or he angles to us, one or the other. I mean, he's getting shot from literally multiple angles, and this is why flanking and outmaneuvering your opponent is key and a crucial component of this game, as well as teamwork and communication. Again, it's not about capping. It's about, you know, seeing who can survive the longest and maintaining your health and survivability, as well as being the last person to cap, not the first person to cap. So right there, we get it. Now we're going to go ahead and open up. You know what? The game is pretty much over. Uh, I see the Minotaur. Do I want to shoot him? Yeah, he's okay. Uh, yeah, I take a shot, but then I notice that the Marseille is going a little bit more broadside in his lower health. Let's just see how much we can knock out. Let's see if we, if we can take out our Marseille by ourselves. It would help out our team greatly. Notice we take a big chunk of damage right there, but we're going to get these nice improved pen angles on the Marseille. He gets a nice uh, hit from our buddy right there, and can we get the final kill on him? And boom, slash two. He goes down. 104,000 damage for us right there, and that is more than enough to secure the the victory for us doing the um, flanking maneuver with the Druid long-range gun build. And uh, you can see in clan battles, long-range and sacrificing concealment is totally fine. It, it works just well if you work together with your team. Colbert is going to nose in, being a smart uh, destroyer player, going to go ahead and nose in, making sure to mitigate as much of those angles as possible so that the Minotaur shells really not are not really doing Doing much, especially trying to kill the Colbert who has that improved saturation. It really is not, uh, but it's not very uh, advantageous for the Minotaur at this point. Also exposing a lot of broadside to our team. So we're trying to go ahead and have two destroyers push right into the cap and they're going to start opening up. All guns are now facing the Minotaur. And uh, as you can see right there, this is exactly why I like the, um, the massive pushes with flanking DDs, especially with a 3DD complement, is because it gives you these options of being able to fire and maneuver and also create distractions, which is very, very crucial in a game where it's all about outflanking your enemy, getting the enemy to shoot at you, to also waste their shots on you so that your uh, friendlies can actually take unabated shots with ease and no stress at all. It's a lot easier when you play this game when you're not getting stressed out by being shot at or sunk, right? Uh, he again, he's gonna. He doesn't know our Puerto Rico is on the left here, so he's gonna go ahead and go and press forward, right, showing broadside right there. So nice broadside shot to the Puerto Rico. That's why uh, destroyer players offer these engagements because it forces the cruiser player to sacrifice positioning and giving up those nice, sweet, juicy uh, broadside shots because they're more focused on killing a destroyer. This should be the death blow right here. He does very well on the Shimakaze, and boom, he goes down. That's the victory right there. That is the game. That is the strategy with the long-range full gun. I kind of like this drill. I'll probably do a little bit more videos on it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like it? What do you like? What can we do good better? As always, thank you for supporting the channel. And I uh, appreciate all the support in building the community. If you're out there, say hi. And as always, look forward to seeing you guys playing the game and uh, being good teammates out there. And you guys stay safe as always. Take care. Cheers.